Okay, welcome back. This is chapter 13, the lucky 13. Actually, this is going to be one of the shortest chapters in the book. Woohoo! So, lecture should go through pretty doggone quick. So this is all about web promotion. So assuming you already have a web page and you want to draw more attention, more visitors, because you have a business and that's how you get money. Is So this chapter is all about how you go about doing that. Let's look at the learning objectives. So commonly used search engines and the search indexes. Describe the components of a search engine. Design web pages that are friendly to those search engines, submit web pages for inclusion, monitor, describe other promotional activities, and use the iframe as if that has anything to do with web promotion. I mean, they just kind of threw that in here because it was a short chapter. I don't know. Okay, so let's start from the beginning, uh, page 547, where this stuff is. And so the purpose of web promotion is to get more people coming to your web page, right? That's the whole idea. Uh, so not only is it to attract new potential customers, I'm assuming this is like an e-commerce site, um, but also to be able to get them to come back. So there's kind of two pieces to this. So there's a specialized industry out there called search engine optimization, SEO. I mean, there are people who do this for a living. Um, I have a website, you guys have seen, and uh, about, I don't know, practically once a week, I get an email from somebody somewhere who says, say, we can help you with your web promotion. Just, you know, contact us and sign a contract and we can get more hits on your web page. So these people are out there and they're hungry. All right. So here's some cool statistics they came up with. It talks about the number of people who use search engines to be able to get to your website. And the answer is a little complex, but basically people don't type URLs, okay? They go to Google and they type something. Even if I, even if I gave my mother the, the web address for, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond, she would type it into Google to get to the website that I just told her. Okay, so yeah. About 80 or 90% of the people either got to the web page this time through a search engine or they got to it via a link that they previously used a search engine to get to. So either way, most likely 80 to 90% of the time they use a search engine to be able to find your site because nobody likes to type. All right. Now there is other ways you can do this in print media or on TV, radio. They can spell out, you know, what the URL is. Um, that kind of sort of works. Uh, if you're trying to get somebody to come to your website, it's going to have to be short and catchy and not not anything that you can misspell, right? So let's talk a little bit about how the search engines work because we're going to we're going to jump into like the Google example in just a second, but. The search algorithms themselves, the, the, what's called the page ranking system. The page ranking system is a highly guarded secret. And quite frankly, it kind of changes over time. Uh, as people get more adjusted to it and kind of learn how it works, trying to game the system, they kind of tweak it a little bit from time to time to kind of keep ahead of those people who are trying to cheat. But the bottom line is um, folks like Google spend an awful lot of energy trying to figure out exactly if I typed in Beanie Babies in a search window what should be the the listing at the top they spend a heck of a lot of energy trying to figure that out and it's not based strictly on popularity it is a, it's a it's extremely complex math which we're not going to get into so because of that this is one of the situations where I highly recommend that you do not try this at home I mean, search engine optimization is a highly specialized uh, group of skills. You probably would be best served to go to a company and you'd have to pay them money and they would set up, chew up a plan. I mean, you would, they would discuss with you, do you want to spend practically no money? And here's what we'll do. Um, if we, you want to spend this amount of money, we'll do this, 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 and this. And you want to spend this amount of money, we'll set up ads that you can get so you can get top billing. For example, you can pay... Google to get top billing. You can do that. It'll show up and it'll be a little, a little triangle or something that says this is an advertisement. You know, so when you type in a search 
if you want to pay big bucks, you could definitely do it. But the way, all that in between paying practically nothing to paying Google to have your stuff sh show up first, um, there's an awful lot of skill and experience in there which you're probably not going to have yourself. So most people, unless you're a big company, most people hire this out. Uh, again, I mentioned I get offers all the time on people to help me with my search engine optimization. Look, I, I'm a hobbyist and I don't really care if people come to my website or not, so I, I'd never even answer them. But if you're trying to do, do business, then yeah, this is some serious stuff. And once again, don't try this at home. Let the, let the professionals do this. They, they know all this stuff and you could spend weeks trying to figure it all out, but they know. Okay. So let's talk about the search engines itself. In the old days, there were quite a few search engines. I mean, quite a few. And now, quite frankly, we're down to uh, essentially Google. <laughs> uh, here's a market share thing. And one of the things you can do is ask for the market share uh, used on the desktop. That's a, a good example. And gee, guess what? Some 78% of people on the desktop use Google. Yeah, it's slightly different if you go in here and you do it like by mobile, um, just because you know, a lot of people have, you know, so at the desktop, you know, around 80% and on, the, on a mobile phone, practically everyone, okay? Nobody's using this stuff anywhere else. Um, so here's an interesting question: um, Is Google available in every country in every language? Does that is that the, how that works? Well, see this one right here. I don't even know how to pronounce that, by the way. But um, Google is not in China, and China has more computer users, internet users, than the U.S. Okay, more. And Google is not in China. Um, they left under. There was a there's a whole story behind it, but in in essence, they were trying to uh, pressure the Chinese government was trying to pressure Google into following their censorship rules, and Google kept saying no, no, no. And uh, because they had a dispute, the Chinese police raided the Google headquarters, and they said, "We're out of here, dude," and walked away, and said, "You know, I'm sorry, we can't do this." They've made some overtures trying to perhaps figure out how to come back to China, but right now they're not in China. Okay, so the point of this whole story is if you can get your site listed on Google, you're practically there, okay? There are other websites um, that you can go to, but for, for all intents and purposes, let's just talk Google and then we'll let the one eaches kind of work out by, by themselves. Okay, so on page 548, uh, they talk about the parts of the search engine system. Well, it has three parts. Basically, a bot that scans assist all the websites, a database to store the websites, and then some sort of a user interface, the search form. You know what we're talking about. You know, you, you pop open Google and you type a keyword in, hit return, <coughs> uh, pops your search engine results page. Okay, so starting at the beginning, the bots, the robots. So bots are these tiny little applications that constantly scour the internet hunting for content. And they're looking for keywords, they're looking for lots of things. And uh, so these are not humans that are doing this. This is a, a, an application that somebody wrote that goes and hits every single website and follows all the links to all the rest of the websites on there, you know, finds all your pages that you have and categorizes them and stores the information in a database. That's what that does. Okay. So, a program that periodically looks up at all the sites, and it, it's primarily looking for changes because most likely the bot has been there once or twice before. And so, if in fact, one of the things that the bot looks at is, has anything changed? For example, if you have a static web page and nothing has changed in the last month, then your, your scoring is going to kind of go down a little bit for search engine results because most likely this is a static web page, you know, a hobbyist kind of a thing, and you're not really in business because, you know, if you were really in business, you'd have a lot of changing content. Okay, 
it follows all the links. Primarily, it looks at things like in the title tag, or the H tags, or the a meta tag. Those are the things that it looks for. Now, it will try to go through and look for everything to, for content. But as we talked about before in previous chapters, it, for example, can't look inside an image or a video. So, you know, you need to have the, you know, the captions or the closed captions or the alternate text. And you have to have all those things because the bot can read those things, but it can't read inside. Okay, cool. Now, in the old days, you had a meta tag. And the meta tag could have a bunch of keywords. And so in the old days, it was pretty doggone easy to stack the deck. Let's say you were selling Beanie Babies. And so you would just put the word Beanie Baby in, in like maybe, I don't know, a hundred times. You would just have a meta tag that said keywords. And you would just say Beanie Baby, Beanie Baby. I can't say that. Beanie Baby. And it would just repeat itself a boom, 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 a hundred times. And so the theory was... Well, my God, the word Beanie Baby is, is referenced a hundred times in this web page. It must be very important, and therefore it'll go to the top of the list. Okay, that probably worked for about a week until somebody figured out, hey, hey, people are g gaming the system. So it's okay to use keywords. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's perfectly okay to use keywords, and you probably should use keywords to help people get to your website. But... Don't try to game the system by like by repeating words over and over and over to get a better score because their bots are smarter than that. So the days of you going in and trying to outsmart the system, nah, those are gone. So basically, having a good structure to your web page, having it logically laid out, having sections with heading tags and titles that are descriptive, and links, at the link descriptions that actually say something other than click here, right? All the things we've been talking about the entire semester, all those things help you with your page rank. If you have a scatterbrain web page that has practically no organization to it at all, you know, no age tags, just a bunch of paragraphs thrown in there in one particular area, the bot's going to basically kind of look through, and the bot, most bots will like look at the headings you know things and maybe the first two or three sentences in a paragraph so if you have a paragraph that's like 100 lines long and you got some important content down here on the bottom third the bot probably is not going to read that okay cool so well structured and compliant pages now in theory you don't get penalized for having like a not you know your, your web page failed HTML or CSS, okay, uh, validation. In theory, uh, that's not really a bad indicator. The bot will still function even though you have, you're not compliant. However, again, the bots would look at that and go, hmm, amateur. Okay, and so right off the bat, they're going to say, well, uh, thank you. It will scan your page. It will, but it's going to lower your, your page rank. Because they're going to look at it and go, well, pfft, this is just an amateur website. Somebody did this in Notepad, and they don't know anything about programming, so therefore their content is probably useless. Okay. So, <clears throat> what happens if I do not want <clears throat> Google to scan my pages? Excuse me. <clears throat> you know, on TV, you always hear about the dark web. Ooh talking about where all the hackers and, and criminals go to, you know, hire hitmen or whatever Hollywood thinks that the dark web is all about. Basically, dark web is the parts of the web that are not typically scanned by search engines. And so you have to know where they are to be able to get to them. Okay. But why would a normal person like you and I, who are, who are not criminals, at least I hope you're not a criminal, why would we ever want to not have a bot scan a part of our web page? Interesting question, which we'll get to after the break. <laughs> <laughs>